Good evening, my name is Juliana Jaramillo and I am the analyst that will be briefing you on US-Asia relations after 9-11. Um, because of the size of the region, I decided to focus on three countries, um, Japan in the East and Pacific, Indonesia in the Southeast, and India in the South. Uh, I'm going to start with Japan, and uh, US-Japanese relationships have been uh, very important since the end of World War II. They're actually our main ally in the region, and uh, this occurred after uh, occupation of, by US forces and the change in their constitution. Um, Japanese uh, reaction to the events of 9-11 was very significant and this was because Japan's constitution, specific, specifically Article 9, limits uh, Japanese military capabilities and limits them to only very specific self-defense causes. So after 9-11, the Japanese Prime Minister decided to take very to take steps to uh, aid the US in their coalition against terrorism uh, this very specific steps that you know were that made Japan a uh, military power again although they're still trying to increase their capacity uh, these steps were recorded in the anti-terrorism special measures law on October 29 2001 this document or these steps uh, enable Japan to participate as a military ally of the US. Currently, Japan is still trying to modify its constitution to expand its military, but um, it's not only to aid the US in, in their security causes, it's because of the increased threats uh, coming from North Korea and their weapons program and China and their advances in the South China Sea more specifically. In 2015, the U.S.-Japan alliance was strengthened by uh, the release of the U.S.-Japan defense guidelines, uh, which provide for new and expanded forms of security cooperation. Uh, last year, also, both countries um, realigned U.S. forces in Japan and consolidated uh, the base of Okinawa. Japan also uh, uh, acts as a very important consultant to the U.S. in regards to North Korea and Chinese issues. Um, Indonesia, the importance of good relations with Indonesia cannot be overstated. Uh, because of the events of 9-11, preventing the growth of Islamic extremism and terrorist groups has been one of the main priorities of the U.S. And Indonesia being the world's third largest democracy, and the largest Muslim population in the world uh, has, become a, has become a key player and a key ally for the U.S. to counter terrorism. Um, in 2010, the U.S.-Indonesia Comprehensive Partnership launched uh, to deepen bilateral relations. This was expanded in 2015 with the U.S.-Indonesia Strategic Partnership and both countries affirm their cooperation, their commitment to a strengthen uh, collaboration in areas such as maritime cooperation, peacekeeping, and most importantly, the countering of transnational threats. Um, Indonesia has been widely successful in, count in counterterrorism law enforcement. Uh, unfortunately, this year in January and as recently as July 5th, Indonesia has encountered, has been the target of uh, ISIS attacks, ISIS bombings, uh, but this has only strengthened the, the partnership between the US and the Indonesian country. Um, I'm going to talk now about India, and India is important as a partner of the US. It uh, also, has also increased after 9-11, especially because their geographical location with neighbors such as Pakistan and Afghanistan. Um, U the U.S. supports India's critical role as a leader in the region and that helps maintain its stability. In regards to the defense uh, partnership with the U.S., US uh, the con both countries have developed um, military cells, joint research, co-production, and co-development efforts. 
uh, the U.S.-India strategic dialogue expanded in 2015 has provided opportunities uh, to strengthen cooperation in all these areas and also in areas such as environmental protection, uh, trade, and development cooperation. Uh, this was my presentation on the U.S. and Asia relations after 9-11. Uh, thank you so much and I'll be open to any questions or comments. Thank you.